It's a lengthy line that could impact our daily lives. Over the past few weeks, numerous container ships have congested one of the crucial elements in global trade, the Panama Canal. A vast 80-kilometer shipping route has been occupied by cargo vessels, all awaiting passage through this century-old connection between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. About 14,000 ships navigate it annually, constituting 6% of global trade. It serves as a vital link in the global supply chain for stores worldwide. However, persistent challenges including technical issues, space limitations, and climate concerns threaten the continued operation of this engineering marvel. Exploring the reasons behind this threat is the focus of our episode today on Luxury Explore. The Unsuccessful Attempt by Ferdinand de Lesseps to Construct a Panama Canal Surprisingly, our journey into the history of the Panama Canal starts in France. Taking us back to the late 19th century, we meet Ferdinand de Lesseps, known as the Great Frenchman. In 1880, this diplomat established the Universal Company of the Panama Interoceanic Canal with an ambitious plan to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. His confidence stemmed from his earlier success with the Suez Canal. Eager to replicate that achievement, he acquired the land concession still held by the United States of Colombia in 1882. Despite his initial enthusiasm, challenges arose. The terrain was vastly different, requiring the navigation of jungles and the excavation of a hill nearly 100 meters above sea level. Harsh climatic conditions including tropical storms and diseases like malaria and yellow fever pushed the project to the brink of bankruptcy. Plans were adjusted to include the Lock Canal, as suggested by parties like Gustave Eiffel. But it was too late. Coupled with a major financial scandal in France, where funds were used more for bribery than canal construction, Ferdinand de Lesseps' company went bankrupt in 1889. This venture cost not only the investment of thousands, but also the lives of over 20,000 workers. Despite the setback, the Panama Canal remains a source of admiration. Its desirability dates back to the 16th century, when Spanish conquistadors were envious of its potential. This route, spanning less than 100 kilometers, offered a shortcut, avoiding the need to navigate around the entirety of South America and the perilous Cape Horn. The time and cost savings were significant. The history of the canal is closely intertwined with that of the country. In 1903, with support from the United States, Panama declared independence. In return, the U.S. secured perpetual rights to the canal and a 16-kilometer wide land strip across the country. Resuming construction in 1904, engineers opted for a lock canal, aided by the advent of vaccines to combat tropical diseases. This monumental 10-year project employed nearly 40,000 workers and cost the United States almost $375 million, making it the country's most expensive undertaking at the time. The canal, stretching 79.6 kilometers with two artificial lakes and three large locks, allowed for the crossing for the entire American continent. A remarkable achievement! Unfortunately, another 5,000 workers lost their lives during the construction. The canal officially opened on April 15, 1914, coinciding with the onset of the First World War, granting the Americans complete control over this crucial maritime passage. The handover of the canal to Panama They determined the size of the locks to be 320 meters long and 33 meters wide, setting the standards for the larger vessels, like the Panamax at 32 meters wide and 294 meters long. In the 1970s, steps were initiated to return the canal and the American enclave to Panama. By 1999, Panama became the owner of the canal, now a crucial financial resource, contributing 10% of the country's revenue. Passage through the canal isn't free, with fees ranging from $10,000 for smaller vessels to $300,000 for Neo-Panamax container ships which are 3.65 meters long and can carry almost 12,000 containers. Prices can escalate during peak periods, with some slots auctioned off. However, the viability of this financial windfall is in doubt as the canal faces challenges. The engineering marvel operates with a system still in use today. Instead of clearing all the land, 
Engineers leveled the road and created two artificial lakes, Lake Gatton and Alajuela, formerly Lake Madden, irrigated by inland rivers. To access this road 28 meters above sea level, locks are used to race and lower boats. This system, requiring locomotives, comes at a cost. 200 to 250 million liters of fresh water from the canal are lost to the ocean each time a boat passes through. This was manageable when rainfall was efficient, but global warming has led to more frequent droughts. Since May, Panama has faced a new episode of drought, exacerbated by the El Nino weather phenomenon. Water indicators in the region often show zero precipitation, lowering river and lake levels. Authorities have taken precautions, reducing boat tonnage to prevent sinking and limiting daily container ship passages from 40 to 32, causing longer queues at the seaway gates. Expanding the Panama Canal In contrast to the Suez Canal, the Panama Canal operates with a lock system, assisted by tugs and specially trained operators for this challenging task. Despite similar demand and less capacity, the waiting times have significantly increased. In early September, Le Mans reported a rise in boat waiting times from four days in regular situations to nearly 20 days in mid-August. As far back as 2006, Panama's queues were making headlines as the canal became too old and small for the expanding container ships. Responding to a referendum vote, the country initiated a $6 billion expansion in 2016, opening new locks that allowed 95% of the world's ship to pass through. Despite expectations, this massive project didn't resolve the water shortage issue. Faced with drought, Panama appears helpless, leading to confirmed passage restrictions for the upcoming year if rains are insufficient until November, the end of the rainy season. The stakes are high, and if the situation persists, ship owners may explore alternative routes, especially the Arctic route, as global temperatures rise and ice melt accelerates. The canal's drying also affects inhabitants, as the artificial lake serves as a drinking water source for over 2 million people in Panama City and its suburbs, nearly half the country's population. Authorities acknowledge the need to address the water volume challenge faced by the Panama Canal. Suggested Initiatives to Address Global Warming Impacts In mid-September, Canal Administrator Ricardi Vasquez stated that an additional water source is necessary. He proposed a solution, revealing plans for a new water reservoir to the west of the canal, utilizing water from the Indio River. This reservoir would supply water to the main artificial lake, Lake Gatton, through an 8-kilometer underground tunnel. The construction of this new water source is expected to take some time, with estimates suggesting about 3 months if there is abundant rainfall and almost 2.5 years if drought persists. Another potential project involves extracting liquid from Lake Bayano and pouring it into the sea passage. However, these initiatives still need consolidation, approval, and financing before implementation. In their latest press release around the time of this video, the canal management company reported an improvement in the situation, with reduced waiting times for boats compared to a month or two ago. Despite this, the water level in Lake Gatton remains significantly low more than 2 meters below seasonal norms, indicating that the underlying problem is yet to be resolved. Well, that ends today's video. What are your thoughts about it? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear them. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video and subscribe to keep posted for more interesting content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.